Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Bom dia. Bom dia. <laughs> Guten Morgen. Morgen. Ayaboan. That's a new one. That one is Sinhala from my wife's family. So it is a beautiful morning out, isn't it? Once again. <laughs> We, uh, we are praying for the sun, um, especially as we are celebrating pride. And many of us are hoping to go out and, and march today. Um, also, I want to say happy Father's Day yeah. and, and happy Pride Month and happy Juneteenth Freedom Day. So welcome to Ainsworth United Church of Christ. No matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So for the months of May through July, our church is in a time of reflection and renewal while our pastor Lynn Smiles Lopez is on sabbatical. So I'm Reverend Noel Anderson, and it's an honor to serve as your sabbatical pastor during this time. And I welcome you to join us on this walk and this sabbatical path on our theme being living spirit bridging the ages. So um, I know we have some people who haven't been here for a little while or maybe some new people and just want to welcome you all. I, I see Fred and Lisa here again visiting from Wisconsin. Great to have you all. A little applause for them. I also have um, my parents-in-law, my sister-in-law, and her kids were able to make it today to worship. So that's uh, Nimal Fernando and Lara Page and their ki- and her kids. So thank you for being here. <laughs> and I know there's more people coming up, I think, from the wonderful Juneteenth breakfast that we had. and. This morning, I thank you to Anita and Colleen and and everybody else, Elvira, who helped organize that. And um, definitely, uh, if you would like to, after worship, there is still food down there. You can go and get some. And I can attest that it was very good. So thank you again for organizing that. Um, Today's service is going to be just a little shorter uh, because we are hoping to get a little crew together to go down to the Pride Parade and actually march together. So anybody and everybody is welcome to join. I know Reverend Cecil and I and Beverly are all and Tom are all planning to go and uh, we'll, we'll be um, trying to get a shared ride as well. So if you wanna hop in the shared ride or if you wanna drive down, just let us know and we can coordinate that. We'll be meeting at Park and on Northwest Flanders between Park and 8th. Um, so other announcements, the Good in the Hood, July 24th to the 26th uh, is happening. We, we are looking to try to get some involvement in that parade if we can get some people together. So. Please let us know if you're interested in that. We have uh, an event. Part of the sabbatical team is putting it together, the intersection of climate and racial justice, a conversation with faith communities. That's going to be Thursday, June 30th at 7 p.m., and that's going to be virtual on uh, the the Zoom. Speaking of virtual, I want to say special thanks to everybody who's tuning in on Zoom today. Um, You're very welcome to join us, and we're so glad that we have that hybrid capacity now. Um, So another event that will be taking place as part of our sabbatical period is uh, essentially, and we're going to, on July 10th, at 10 a, starting at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., we will be uh, having an intergenerational event that is based about learning the history of this community, and, and that's going to be led by Bruce Poinsett Jr., who works with the Vanport Museum. And some of you know that we have congregants that are were actually in those documentaries, like Carolyn Hinton, um, the part of the Vanport Mosaic. So you'll definitely want to be there for that. There will be refreshments being served. So those are our announcements for today. Um, I'm sure there's more, but look for those community news. And let us be in a spirit of worship. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 
Uh, I'll start with the land and labor acknowledgement. We sit on the ancestral homelands of the Multnomah, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Malala, Bands of the Chinook, and many others who make their home along the Columbia River. We honor the members of over 400 tribal communities who live in the Portland metro area. We acknowledge the labor of kidnapped and enslaved Africans and Chinese workers and Latinx farm workers who have risked so much and received so little. They have all helped to build the wealth of this country. Please take a moment to honor the people who continue to resist and survive despite the intentional and ongoing attempts to destroy them. And now for the call to worship. Please stand as you are able. <clears throat> I will be the one and we will all be the all. <clears throat> we gather together this Juneteenth, this Father's Day, and this Pride Sunday to celebrate freedom from slavery, to honor fathers, and to declare our pride in being an open and affirming congregation. We find comfort and strength in our faith family and ask God to nurture and provide for us on our spiritual quest to be and build the beloved community. We look to the living spirit to fill our hearts with pride for who we are made to be, unique in the image of God. We pray for the coming of the realm of God and cry out for freedom when all of God's children are free and feel the sense of welcome and belonging. May these prayers be turned into action. Amen. Now please remain standing for a rousing I woke up this morning. I invite you to join me in prayer as we pray for our community. Let us remember that we are not alone, but we are gathered with one another. Let us extend our love and our prayers for those around us and for our world. 
Let us pray. We come today representing all the majesty of creation, diverse and beautiful, blessed and beloved, all made in the image of the creator of all things. We come today at this time, at this place, to cry out to God who responds with love and mercy. God grant us grace to contend fearlessly against evil and to make no peace with oppression. Help us like those, <coughs> like those generations before us who resisted the evil of slavery and human bondage in any form and any manner of oppression. Help us to use our freedoms to bring justice among peoples and nations everywhere. God, we call and acknowledge all those who are created in your image. Transgender, non-binary, bisexual, two-spirit, lesbian, intersex, gay, queer, and ally, all come created in your image. We come today crying out for you to hear our prayers, our prayers of hope as well. We remember those in our midst and indeed those in our world who are recovering from so much devastation. Devastation by a pandemic, devastation by war, devastation by the pandemic of institutionalized racism, devastation by the destruction of our planet. And yet we come today not only asking for these needs, these problems to be resolved. But we do so knowing that you care for us, you care for the creation, and you call us together to strive together to create, to live into, to manifest the beloved community. And so on this day, in this place, where we acknowledge Juneteenth Freedom Day, we acknowledge pride, and we acknowledge fathers, we ask that we come together knowing that even when others reject us, your arms are open to offer comfort and guidance and love. Open our arms to offer love and guidance and hope. We thank you, O oh God, for hearing our prayers and for calling us to work together to live into the kingdom where all are nurtured supported and loved. And so we declare our faith by saying together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Creator God, who art in heaven, all of is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
Thank you. That is exactly the message we are talking about. We want everyone to feel welcomed. And 
Thank you for being with us again, Mel. You, you had mentioned that you just got married recently? No, Friday. Friday, you're getting married? Yes. Oh, wow. Well, congratulations. <laughs> that is very exciting. Well, thank you for being uh, with us right before your wedding. <laughs> um, now, this would be the time which we had, would invite the children forward for the share the story but I'm seeing some young faces out there, but I'm not seeing too many children. <laughs> uh, so you might have to bear with me on, on this children's message. Maybe you can play along a little bit. Uh, today we're talking, of course, about diversity. And again, we're, that's you know, been a theme for us during Pentecost. And we want to honor Father's Day. So part of that is recognizing that we want to honor all fathers. So all of those fathers that, you know, maybe they adopted or we have grandfathers or guardians or foster dads or any, any parent that has played that role of provider we, we want to honor today. And it could be a family of two dads and really thinking about how, how we have family part of we have our church family but then we have our, our families are looking so so much more diverse that are matching the way our communities are looking right and so but one thing about father's day my dad was really good at at uh, telling cheesy jokes <laughs> and and in fact dads are known for that i guess right and at the, when I was a teenager, I would make fun of him. But now that I'm a dad, I also feel that I need to pass on the tradition oh, no. of some cheesy jokes here and there. So I have a few for you here, and this was meant to be geared towards children, which is why I have animals involved. <laughs> and we have one child, yay! <laughs> and a couple babies in the back. So what are the world's smartest animals do we know fish because they stay in pools <laughs> what do you she's like that joke what do you call a cow after an earthquake a milkshake. yeah milkshake good one shannon all right what do you call a sheep what do you call a sheep that knows karate a lamb chop uh, <laughs> and, and I was going to tell you all a time-traveling joke, but you guys didn't like it. In the future, see? But, okay, that one didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make here is that we want to try to love our dads, love our parents, even if they're not that funny. And understand that being part of a family is dealing with other others, people's funny things or not so funny things and loving each other the best you can through that as a family. So uh, with that, uh, I will ask some of some volunteers, whoever would like to be willing to hand out some of these flowers to all of the the. Uh, Parents, the fathers in the house. Here's the word of the Lord. Now before faith, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. 
Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to his promise. This reads the end, ends the reading. Thank you for that. But always good to hear the word of God. And today is an important day. We're celebrating Father's Day, Pride, Juneteenth, and as Reverend Prescott mentioned last, last week as, as he uh, introduced Today's Sunday, he said it's Black Gay Father's Day, and I wish Marlon was here to preach, but unfortunately, he is being a father at his daughter's swim meet right now. I know he wanted to be here. It's also, June 20th is also World Refugee Day, so how do we fit all these themes in one service? Well, it's a little impossible, but as we continue to think about this season of Pentecost, these overarching goals that we have at Ainsworth UCC to build a diverse faith community that is multiracial, multicultural, open and affirming, and immigrant welcoming, well, it seems that these things do come together with God's call to love all people and to work towards freedom. This is what unites us. So the reality is that people don't have just one identifier. We can't we cannot be confined to who we are according to our race or orientation or gender alone. We are complex beings with intersectional identities that are often shifting through context, time, and space. We recognize the issues that we care about are intersectional because of these overlapping and shifting identities, perhaps all of us at some time have experienced bullying or have felt discriminated against for many different reasons. I remember starting a new high school in a rural area where my dad had taken a church in Marysville, Northern California, a town of about 12,000 people. I was a late bloomer when I was 14 years old, I was just 5'5", five five, and my voice had not changed yet. I had that really high pitch going on still. And in the 90s, this was great fodder for teens to make fun of me, calling me gay often and shaming me for seeming more feminine. This even continued to a lesser extent after my voice finally cracked and I shot up six inches. Now, don't get me wrong here, by no means would I compare this experience to what people go through coming out or the type of discrimination people face because of racism, but it did affect me, it shaped me. At first, it hurt me, it, it made me feel as though I was, well, how did it make me feel? <laughs> it made me feel introverted and scared uh, and when I reflect back, it, it also made me question why certain people were excluded. Why were, are some people excluded and why are some people included? It made me want to be in solidarity with others who were being bullied for whatever reason that was. Now, throughout our world history, the type of slavery practiced in the U.S. and the Americas was one of the most brutal forms of oppression to which this country or this world has ever seen. And we still have much work to do to repent and heal and reconcile. As we celebrate Juneteenth, it's incredible to think that this was just recently made a national holiday. As, as this, you know, it took this national reckoning with the BLM March, Black Lives Matters marches to come to recognize the importance of this day. Many didn't even know what this Juneteenth day was about after 
that you know helped flee or free over four million African Americans who were enslaved. June 19th, 1865, finally the Union troops arrived to the most westernmost Confederate state of Texas in Galveston Bay, and everybody finally knew they were free, and that is why we celebrate this day. Now, as we read the news and watch the events over the last decade, it, does it ever feel to you like the Civil War is still happening in a way? Right? The white nationalists rallied to protect Confederate symbols, the same groups that were linked to the January 6th insurrection attempt, and just last week were caught and arrested for planning a riot to cause harm at a Pride event in Idaho. It often feels like today's culture wars are based in a larger, ongoing struggle about who is excluded, who is included, where many in this country still refuse to accept that all people are created equal, that all people are created in the image of God. As we honor Father's Day, remember Abraham, the father of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And we, we recognize this metaphor of God, the Father, has often become manipulated over the years and, and limited in its scope. I don't know about you, but I've never really believed that God was some old, straight, white guy with a long beard looking down at me with a punishing staff. But as a new parent, the overwhelming love I feel for my son that makes me excited to give him kiddle, cuddles and tickles, but also willing to stay up at all hours of the night if he's sick. This is perhaps just an inkling of what the love God feels towards us. And I was actually up at 3 a.m. today with my son, so if I'm a little incoherent, incoherent I have a good excuse. <laughs> so when we talk about Abraham, we also think about the nature of covenants that we see in Scripture. God's covenant with Noah in Genesis 9 reads, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you that every living, cult, every living creature that is with you for all future generations, I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Which then this follow, the, what follows that is the, the, the covenant with Abraham, which is really about the gift of children and the saving of God's people from famine and the finding of the promised land. In the UCC, we don't have hierarchical structures of bishops and cardinals, but what we do focus on is covenants, agreements or conditions that are meant to set us in right relationship with God and with one another. We see in our sacred texts that covenants shift and change the agreements we're making with God. Our theology, our spiritual journey is always developing, progressing, transforming. Since the time of Noah and Abraham, the rainbow has been a floating signifier over generations, but it has often stood for diversity and inclusion. Did you know that rainbows contain a continuum of around one million colors that are indistinguishable to the human eye, but we only see seven, really, of those cloud colors. How many more colors are there for us to see in the world if we can only open our eyes? In 1968, Chicago black leaders like Fred Hampton began to form alliances across lines of race and ethnicity with other community-based movements in the city, including Latinx groups, AAPI, indigenous, and working class whites. They found common ground regarding desperate you know, conditions that they faced in the, post, in the segregated cities of post-war America. Post America. 
They conflict, con, 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 came together to confront the issues of police brutality, substandard housing, and they called themselves the Rainbow Coalition. Not long after, in 1978, Harvey Milk, the first openly gay politician elected to office, asked his friend Gilbert Baker to create a symbol for the LGBTQI plus community to reveal a new design, a gay freedom pride parade in San Francisco that year. Baker, a gay rights activist, army veteran and artist began with a colorful striped flag. Each color on the flag had a special meaning such as life, sunlight, nature, serenity, and spirit. 30 volunteers hand dyed and stitched the original two flags. When I see the recent modern history of the rainbow, I draw a clear connection between the Pentecost moment when the Holy Spirit's tongues of fires allowed the disciples to speak across languages and cultures, and the rainbow flag that we have today transcends national borders and unites people of different cultures or symbolizes the global LGBTQI plus family and our world's struggle for freedom. In this letter that we have today to the Galatians, which was primarily a Greek congregation, there is a shift away from a legalism, a dogmatism that become a, can become a hindrance in one's faith journey. Instead, we're reminded that there is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for you are all one in Christ. And if we follow God, if we follow Christ's teachings, if we work to love one another, we can be united. And hand and by hand, we can be transformed in our faith. We can work in our communities to care for our creation and to see the type of social justice we know that we are capable of as we work towards the beloved community. Now, we must always acknowledge that there have been ways in which Christianity and a combination of bad theology has really hurt people particularly from the LGBTQIA plus community, but, but from many communities. We know that, that uh, there is this thing now that people call white Christian nationalism, which is linked to this white supremacist ideology. But let us at Ainsworth, let us as the United Church of Christ, let us be a testimony for a renewed covenant that the grace of God is free to all where repentance, forgiveness, and healing is at the forefront. God's still working with us. God is still speaking. We cannot place a period where God has placed a comma. And the most important message that we have to carry on as a faith community to the world is that God loves us no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, God loves you. Amen. We are truly blessed to be in a community like Ainsworth that is multi-ethnic, multicultural, open and affirming. And one of the best ways that we can show our appreciation for that is to donate. You can donate online at AinsworthUCC.org. Uh, you can do bill pay through your bank, or you can donate right now. Will the ushers please come forward? Calling, calling for 
Now join, please everyone stand and join in uh, the hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and join in the uh, prayer of dedication. We give you thanks, God our help, for the abundance of gifts you have planted in us as seeds that we may share in bloom. May these offerings be a blessing upon your people in our search for freedom, justice, and dignity for all. Right, we, we have come together, we have worshiped, we have sang the wonderful music. Thank you to our musicians. And now we, we invite you to fellowship. If you would like to join some food and, and, and fun discussion in, about Juneteenth in Michael Hall, you're welcome. If you would like to join Reverend Cecil and I going down to the Pride March and carrying our church banner, you are welcome to that as well. And our work continues, and thank you, Ainsworth, for your continued testimony. Let us, let us, do the, uh, let us be in prayer together as we say the benediction. May the spirit of the living God be with you. Eyes with truth. And fear with hope. May the abiding one strengthen you as you march for justice. May wisdom be the voice you follow now as you go out into the world, encouraged and emboldened with pride in the quest for freedom. Amen. Amen.